In another clip, we learned that when customizing the Quick Access Toolbar, there are some hidden commands that don't appear by default anywhere on the ribbon. In this clip, we'll add some of those commands to a new ribbon tab that will allow us to work with shapes in some powerful ways. Right-click anywhere on the ribbon and choose Customize Ribbon. From here, we'll click the tab we want our new tab to follow, then click New Tab. Select the new tab in the list and rename it Extras. We'll do the same with the new group that was created and call it Shapes. Now with the Shapes group selected, change the Commands list on the left to show Commands not in the ribbon. Next, scroll down and add the four Shape commands to the Shapes group. Then click OK. Here's our new tab with our new group of shape tools. Now, as for what these tools can do for us, here we see some custom shapes I've already created on a slide. On the left are the two shapes that were used to create the finished shapes. Let's see how easy it is to use our newly found shape tools. We'll move the arrow into place on top of the rectangle. Now hold the Shift key down and select the rectangle. With both shapes now selected, we'll come up to the ribbon and choose Shape Combine. And now we have a new custom shape. Notice that the style of our arrow, its color and border, became the style of the new shape. That's because the arrow was the first shape we selected. As you use these shape tools, the order the shapes are selected can make a difference in the results we get. But don't worry, just be prepared to use the Ctrl plus Z or Undo command. Then reselect the shapes in a different order before reusing the shape command. To finish off this shape, we'll add a shadow. Type into the shape just as we can with standard shapes. and add any extras to help us make our point. Perfect. Let's try one of the other shape tools. Again, we see the two basic shapes that make up our finished custom shape. We'll drag the pentagon shape onto the rounded corner rectangle. Then hold down the shift key and select the rectangle. Switch to the Extras tab and choose Shape Subtract. Oops! When PowerPoint subtracted the second shape selected, which was the larger rectangle, the smaller pentagon inside it was removed as well. We'll press Ctrl-Z on the keyboard to undo the subtraction. Then reselect our shapes. First the rectangle, then the pentagon that we want to subtract from it. We'll use the Shape Subtract command again. And this time it looks like it should. Again, at this point, we can use any of PowerPoint's shape formatting options to finish off the look of our new custom shape. So, we learned here how to locate and use PowerPoint 2010's powerful new shape tools.